Hello, I am Orbiter, and before this video is done, we will have built a space plane, an SSTO to take our Kerbal to orbit. We will develop this craft in this episode to get ourselves into orbit and into the future. Oh, and by the way, even though I've made SSTOs before, I've decided to do it from the ground up. Normally, I would go and have a look at other people's videos, have a look at other people's crafts, work out how they work, and then build them off top of their design. So this time, I decided, let's go the proper route and do some experiments. First off, this experiment, which will make um, people who do not use spreadsheets or numbers or anything else which makes sense, uh, proud. <laughs> Basically what I'm doing here, I'm testing the intakes, the air intakes to see their efficiency. First off, we're going to use the small intakes, the rager ones. They weigh less, but they take less air in at the speeds that they go. So we'll have a keep an eye on that and work out how well that works. And as I said, this is not a prop test, so if you like spreadsheets and numbers, best not look at this video. Anyhow, the way we're going to do this test is we're going to use the intakes, run it as fast as we can at the highest altitude until the altitude starts dropping, or the speed and the speed straps dropping as well. And from that, we should be able to determine, determine which intake is the best to use. And you can see I'm adding a uh, thrust to weight ratio on the HUD there in the top right. It's 0.41, 0 0.37, because as soon as you pull it up, you're going to start losing thrust. Anyway, let's see how these intakes function. Okay, so 22 kilometers. Uh, the flow is reduced to that which we need for the engine to function and keep up the speed, and we're dropping in altitude. So, 22 kilometers, that's pretty good for that intake, even though they're small. I don't think they function as well. Anyway, to add the other intakes, I found out I needed to add some radial attachment points. Now they're going to add a bit of weight and these intakes are quite weighty anyway. I'm just probably going to add some extra aerodynamic drag. So because those intakes are quite large, I don't think the radial attachment points are going to matter so much. Although they do give me a handy surface to attach the wheels. And if you wonder about this, this is Kerbal Wind Tunnel. It's supposed to give you the drag versus altitude, speed versus altitude, and I can tell you what thrust you can have. I find it quite handy, although it doesn't work 100% of the time. I still have to get used to how to use that, so I'm just using it at the, this time, just to try to get used to, see what the numbers really mean. And I really have to work on getting the winglet set up in the VA before launching. Anyway, let's launch this one. These are the ram intakes, which should be good at high speeds. Get a lot more oxygen flow, that means... More flow, <laughs> more fuel. Anyway, more oxidizer because we've only got liquid fuel for these engines. And if you're wondering why I'm using the jet engine, it's to keep a sensible engine. The rapiers aren't good until you get up to 400 meters per second. If this if the rape, I use the rapiers and this couldn't get up to 400 meters per second then you know I'm not going to get fast enough to get that engine to work properly so that's why I'm using a ramjet engine I think it's the ramjet isn't it? Anyway let's see how these work it looks like we're about 20 kilometers we're starting dropping altitude our speed is hardly increasing I think these are worse than the small radial intakes it may be that I'm not testing these intakes properly in a more scientific manner, but I thought, what the hell, let's just go with it, see what I come up with, and just go with the flow. In other words, Kerbal style. Okay, so the shock cone intakes, they're worse. I think they're designed to work at extreme supersonic speeds, and we're hardly going at that. Anyway, what is supersonic speed? I don't remember. Okay, the last one is the inline intake. As you can see the middle tank there, that's the, well, engine pre-cooler. It cools the engine as well, which I'm wondering about, but it's a lot heavier as well. So let's get this up to speed, get this up to altitude, and it's cut out. <laughs> but it's at 25 kilometers. I think this is the one we should use as well, because it's going to reduce the amount of drag it has. And this is our first SSTO attempt. 
With the advancement of technology, we can now create an engine which is not just a jet engine, but is also a rocket. It will work in space, it will fire multiple times and get us to the stars and beyond. But first things first, let's try and get ourselves into space. Okay, on this first attempt... Okay, so for our initial design, I've put only one rocket fuel tank to two fuel tanks of jet engine fuel. And this is so we can get our speed up as much as possible in the atmosphere and it's going to take a lot less rocket fuel for us to get into orbit. Now, don't forget rocket fuel is used up a lot quicker, especially with the rapiers. And as you can see, these rapiers quickly get ourselves up to 400 meters per second, which means that they kick in to the kick-ass mode, which means we go extremely fast. Okay, so... We're in space, we got ourselves to 83 kilometers, but we're not enough rocket fuel. Damn it, it's a suborbital firelight. Never mind, Jeb, we shall improve upon our design. Okay, so this took me another attempt after this one to work out what the ratio of fuel we needed. So now this has two tanks of rocket fuel. Uh, Two and a half tanks of rocket fuel, sorry, I correct myself, and then one tank of jet fuel. And this apparently works quite well, because if you look, we've got 13,000 kilometers, it's going to might use a bit of the extra fuel in the rocket tanks, but then we'll have the extra oxidizer, it's probably not the perfect balance, but I think it's going to work. Also, I have to note, I changed the flight plan, as you can see by here, from launch, you want to point at 20 degrees, get as high, because originally I tried to fly slower and faster, and then just keep at that trajectory until you get about 13 kilometers, then try to level off, get as fast as you can until your nose cone is about to explode by the heat indicators, as will shortly be shown and then pull up, try to get out of the atmosphere as fast as possible before your nose clone explodes. Okay, there's the heat indicator. It's getting dangerously close to the end there. Pull up, pull up, Jeb. And this is to get as fast as possible to get the amount, the best amount of lift from your wings as well as using the speed to get up in the altitude before you lose the oxygen and lose your speed. We're all, we're thrust weight ratio is actually about two by here which I'm quite surprised at perhaps what I should do is fly a bit higher and then try to get a high speed perhaps the nose cone will explode then I, I haven't had that problem yet only on re-entry but it appears we have enough fuel to get into orbit so yes my first SSTO made from well from scratch basically this works great I didn't follow any guides, I done this, all this myself, I just put things together and tried to get them to work. The only thing I used was my previous knowledge that you need your center of lift just behind your center of mass and you need the tanks to drain equally, which I don't think it actually is. But by a happy accident with the fuel left at the rear of this craft, that means it's going to be a bit more stable of re-entry, it's not going to flip out of control and we're not going to get a flat spin, which is more, most of my SSTOs suffer from that. And look at that, we've got 813 meters per second, rocket fuel left, a little more extra and we could get to the man. Yes, that's how good my SSTO is, but I don't think it'll survive re-entry from that distance, so... Yes, let's go and return and see if we'll land on the landing strip. Okay, so this I do not do too often. I'm trying to land, re-enter the atmosphere and trying to get on that landing strip. Now, I've purposely made this orb, this re-entry so we overshoot the landing strip and I need to make sure that we have enough height that I can turn around and come back to the landing strip. The harder part is if you want to go over the mountains here, just before the KSC, not hit the mountains and land at the landing strip. That's a lot harder, you need to do a lot of aero braking. So here we go. The worst part is the re-entry. At about 202 kilometers per second, this is dangerous. I decided, let's uh, point down, let's get a lower altitude, 
that this should slow us down. However, it also kills our Kerbals. So the best thing to do is try to do your arrow breaking as high as possible. That way you get less re-entry heating and then you should survive a lot easier. At least that is the theory. Let's put it to the test. So at this point of the video, while we're re-entering here, let me know if you want me to continue with this type of series. Constructing SSTOs, you can follow the development of my craft, you can tell me what you want to know, You can perhaps you don't want SSTOs but you do want space planes, just let me know. Or perhaps I could go back to developing rockets and weird constructions. Oh, and yeah, I thought I would just decided to point down a bit, reduce the height until we get the re-entry heating, then we'll do the arrow breaking by pulling up. I was trying to reduce the height so that we get close to the landing strip before I pull up and do the arrow breaking. That might not be a good move, but it seems to be working. Using the most of the aircraft as an aero break it seems to work a lot better. That means you get an equal heating across the aircraft. And it's slowing down a lot quicker at a higher altitude. Because I think after you get under 30 kilometers, when you're going at high speeds, that's where the aerodynamics or the shock heating or whatever you've got re-entry heating is causing the most of the damage. So yes, try to do your aero braking, your dangerous aero braking, I think we'll call it, at higher altitudes. Now we're slowing down. We're under 200 meters per second. So are we going to make it? I think what we have to do here is a balancing act. You have to point down like I'm doing here to increase your speed to make sure that you're not stalling your aircraft. And then you are slowly pull your aircraft up so you're arcing slowly, decreasing your angle of attack, and then bring it, try to level off as much as you can while trying to increase your speed by pointing down. Will Jebediah make it? I hope so because I have to tell you I'm terrible at landings and this is not probably not the best aircraft that I've built. This is more of just a test. Basically, it's a rocket with <laughs> with two wings. But to be fair, the jets that they use for testing to get into space, the rocket jets that NASA used, they were basically rockets with wings, control surfaces. And what's the shuttle other than a rocket with a big payload and control surfaces? So yeah, it's basically a flying brick. Although this is a bit more aerodynamic, I suppose. Okay, so it appears we have succeeded to get into the runway at least. Can we succeed in our landing? Ready to break? Uh, uh, I should, uh... <laughs> oh dear, we lost the engine. I should learn how to land and not try to pulse, try to sort of level off. Let's get Jeb out. Oh, we can't. It's obstructed. Less wiggly aircraft. That does not seem to work. Fast for a time. Physical acceleration. Yes, that worked. I know what I could have done. Put the gearing and let it out again. Okay, Jeb. That was awesome landing. Also, I couldn't get all the mods installed on version 1.5, the silver mods, because it doesn't work on all the tanks now for some reason. So anyway. Thank you for watching. This is from me, Orbiter, and Jebediah. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not, because I also do tutorials when, when I get a chance. And I've got videos planned. So, yeah, why not? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys.